Hello everyone, in this video we'll talk about how the debugging works on both hardware and software level. We'll also talk about the limitations and traps that naturally come with debugging a mostly hardware based system like a microcontroller. So let's get started. Let's first talk about the hardware side of things. In the last video I've said that debugging is also a feature of the microcontroller. That's because debugging is implemented with physical circuitry and that circuitry resides in your microcontroller. There is a way to debug in software, done through the usage of software breakpoints, which I'll talk more about in a bit. But software breakpoints are not supported by Picket 3, which is the programmer we'll be using here. Software debugging also doesn't have some of the advanced features of hardware debugging, so unless you absolutely need to, you would use hardware anyways. But again, I'll talk more about them in a bit. So the question is, how is debugging done in the microcontroller then? Remember that we put what is called a breakpoint to halt the program at a certain location in the last video. A breakpoint is just a condition you set that will cause the program to halt when satisfied. We put the breakpoint on the line we wanted the program to halt at, right? So we wanted the program to halt when the instructions related to this line started to execute, right? So somehow the programmer needs to be able to monitor the instructions being executed by the microcontroller. Like I said in the previous video, you have a register called program counter, which points to the next instructions as address. Now, the microcontroller also has a hidden register, which is compared with the program counter. And whenever the values of these registers end up the same, the microcontroller automatically halts. Whenever you set a breakpoint, the address of the first instruction that corresponds to that line is loaded onto this register by the programmer. So whenever your microcontroller goes to that instructions as address, the program halts. When this register is compared with the program counter, it is referred to as a program breakpoint. But you can also compare this register with RAM addresses. So you can also halt your device when a certain address or variable in your RAM is accessed. This is referred to as a data breakpoint. You can also specify to halt when reading or writing. You can even make it so that you only halt when a certain value is written onto that variable. We'll talk about all of these and some more in the next video. Now, the biggest problem with this hardware debugging approach is that the amount of these hidden compare registers are limited. For our microcontroller, for example, you are limited to three hardware breakpoints in total. On some of the lower end or older microcontrollers, this can be as low as one or two, which keeps your debugging options pretty limited. But luckily, you can switch the breakpoint locations on the go when the microcontroller is halted, which allows you to reuse breakpoints by switching between them one by one. By the way, by contrast, debugging in software through software breakpoints are unlimited in use, meaning you can put as many software breakpoints as you want. The downside is that you can't use them as data breakpoints, they're slow, and they degrade your flash memory on each use. But again, Picket 3 doesn't support software breakpoints, so we won't talk about them for now. Maybe I'll make a dedicated video on that in the future. Now, when you program your device for debugging, I've said that you can monitor or even change any variable when halted. To do that, the programmer needs to be able to perform the same operations as the microcontroller, right? To access or change these variables. But the programmer doesn't have a way to operate on your microcontroller like that. Instead, it directly uses your microcontroller. When a halt occurs, the microcontroller will also jump to a special program address, much like how it does on an interrupt event. I have a bunch of videos on interrupts in my Pick Microcontroller tutorial series. You can check them out if you don't know the topic. So when your project is built for debugging, a special program is also loaded onto a specific location on your program memory, which the microcontroller jumps to when halted. This works just like an interrupt service routine, or ISR, but this special code is referred to as debug executive. And much like an ISR, it saves the values the microcontroller is currently working on, along with program locations and etc. This way, your programmer can directly use the microcontroller to access whatever it wants through this debug executive, which contains the code to make that happen. And this is also why you can only read or write to a variable if the microcontroller is halted. There are dedicated tools for viewing variables in real time, but we won't get into that. If you need that functionality, the best way is to just use a display, like an LCD, to see the values. I'll put a link down below for my video on how to use my LCD library to do that. Now, this debug executive approach does come with some caveats though. Since the debug executive is also a program, it requires some resources of its own. It'll require some program memory, some special RAM locations, and one to two levels of hardware stack. 
You can actually check these requirements from the in circuit debugger section of your microcontroller's datasheet. For our microcontroller, there are no requirements, since I'm assuming those are implemented in the microcontroller separately. But for some of the other microcontrollers that don't have this, these requirements can be brutal, especially if the microcontroller is small to begin with. If you're already using your microcontroller at its limit, debugging your code might cause errors, like hardware overflow or not enough programming space, but the compiler should inform you if such an error is going to happen. So these requirements are different for different microcontrollers, and if you want to see them for any microcontroller, you can go to the documentation page I talked about in the last video. There is a reserved resources section that contains the requirements needed for all microcontrollers listed. For example, I can navigate as shown on screen to find out about the PIC 18 f 46 k 22 I'm using, and as you can see, it doesn't have any requirements. It says here that it requires these RAM locations that weren't listed in the datasheet, but these are special locations that contains the hardware stack's top value, which is not something you can normally use as RAM anyways, which is probably why they weren't listed in the datasheet. Before we talk about the software side of things, let's first talk about the dashboard. First off, to build your project in debugging mode, you have to have a debugger selected, or the MP lab won't allow you to debug. On your dashboard, there are tabs dedicated to showing information on debugging at the bottom. Here you can see that I have my Picket 3 selected as the debugging tool. If you have no debugging tool selected, you can do that by clicking this button, which will open up your project properties. Here you can select the hardware tool for debugging or programming. You can also select simulator to debug without a microcontroller, which I'll talk about in a separate video. The dashboard also shows you how many breakpoints you have left or used. And like I said, this microcontroller only has three hardware breakpoints, which you can also find out in the documentation I pointed you to in the last video. If I put a random breakpoint, you can see that they update immediately. And like I explained before, data and program breakpoints are shared. So even if I put a program breakpoint like this, the data breakpoint also gets used. By the way, these BP terms is the abbreviation for breakpoint just to clear any possible confusion. It's also telling us that data capture breakpoints aren't supported. I don't know what it refers to, but I'm assuming it refers to complex breakpoints. We'll talk more about those in the next video. It's also telling us that software breakpoints aren't supported, which I already talked about. There is also this small menu that pops up whenever you debug, which tells you the reserved resources used by the debugging process. Let's now talk about what happens in software when you build your project for debugging. When you press the debug main project button, your program is built or compiled separately than normal, since it requires the use of hidden registers, debug executive, and possibly some more changes. So along with your normal program, a small piece of code is also added by the compiler to be uploaded to your microcontroller to allow for debugging. MPLab will also secretly set a pragma term called debug before calling the compiler, which you should never temper with yourself. So your project is separately built or compiled for debugging, which is referred to as a debug build. This is again different than a normal build using the build main project button, which is referred to as release build or production build. After making both release and debug builds, you can actually go to the files tab on the left, select your project and go to dist, then default. Here you can see two different directories for different builds, one for debug build and one for release or production build. Separate builds require separate files, which is why the two builds are separated. Also, one big difference is that a debug build won't contain a hex file here, while the normal build will. Before ending this video, I wanna talk about a problem called skid effect, or skidding for short. Skidding refers to the execution of additional instructions before halting, after hitting a breakpoint. When you put a breakpoint in hardware, you expect the microcontroller to halt at that exact breakpoint location, right? But unfortunately, that won't be the case. You'll instead execute one or more instructions before stopping. This is caused by the architecture of the processor and the way the instructions are pipelined, so you can't prevent it from happening, it just comes with the microcontroller. Let me show you an example. I'll quickly put a nope instruction in between one of these lines, the reason for which I'll explain shortly. Then I'll just put a random breakpoint in this program I wrote last video, then debug. After the program halts, I'll open up the assembly equivalent of my C code from the window menu up top. 
As you can see, each line will have their corresponding assembly instructions listed here. I'll talk about these in a separate video, so don't worry about it for now. Let's put them side by side for reference. To update my assembly window, I'll quickly rerun my program to hit this breakpoint again. Now, as you can see, the program counter also shows up on the assembly window. But look at this, we put the breakpoint on this line, right? Which means we want to stop right before executing this line. Even though our C window says that our program counter has stopped at the breakpoint, the assembly window shows us that we have in fact executed one instruction from this line before stopping. Normally, we would expect to stop here before executing any instructions that corresponded to this C line. Now, depending on what instructions your breakpoint is set to, this skid effect can vary. The microchip developer website says that for single cycle instructions, the skid effect will be one instruction long, while for multiple cycle instructions, it can be multiple instructions long. By multiple cycle instructions, it refers to the instructions that take multiple instruction clocks to execute, which there are a couple of in PIC microcontrollers, so not every instruction will take one instruction clock to execute. Now, remember the nope instruction I've added at the beginning. Say that we want to put a breakpoint on this line. Since we know that for single cycle instructions, the skid effect will be one instruction long, we can insert a nope instruction before our intended breakpoint location and add a breakpoint on the nope instruction instead. Nope instruction is single cycle long, which means the program counter will stop at exactly the next instruction, which is the line we want to stop at. Let's put a breakpoint on this nope instruction and run our program again. As you can see, the program counter stopped at exactly the beginning of this line, like we wanted. I can rerun the microcontroller and it still exactly stops on this line. So you can use this nope instruction to control the skidding effect, which is why I put these two nope instructions in the last video. Now, this skidding only affects hardware breakpoints. There won't be any skidding when using software breakpoints because of the way they're implemented, but we won't get into that. Also, there shouldn't be any skidding when using simulator either, all of which will be a topic of a future video. And that's the end of the video, and thank you for watching. If you liked the video, you can always leave a like and subscribe, it's always appreciated, and I'll see you in the next video.